for the third straight year, were continuing the Ranking the Rooms AFC North series here at Steelers Depot. You can find the latest rankings here. Today, we'll move to the back half of the defense, taking a look at the AFC North safeties rooms. He'll personally run down each position, starting with the quarterbacks in the division, and ending with specialists in this 10-part series. In case you forgot the rankings from last summer, I have you covered. Here is the 2017 Ranking the Rooms, AFC North Safeties list, Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh Steelers, Cincinnati Bengals, Cleveland Browns. Let's take a look at this year's list. 1. Baltimore Ravens Not much has changed at the top for safeties in the AFC North. Veterans Eric Weddle and Tony Jefferson return for the Baltimore Ravens, giving the purple and black one of the top safety tandems in the NFL, let alone the AFC North. Weddle has lost a step, but HES still a game wrecker, while Jefferson brings a violent edge to the defensive secondary. Behind the two Pro Bowl caliber safeties, second year safety Chuck Clark and rookie Deshaun Elliott provide the depth for the Ravens. Following the draft, I said I felt like the Ravens found a starter in Elliott late, and I still stand by that. He has the range and athleticism for the position, so I'm wondering why he fell. Clark is a run-and-hit guy, who fits the makeup for the Ravens' team philosophy. This is a dangerous safeties room, too. Pittsburgh Steelers This room underwent a ton of change in the offseason, but they don't fall one single spot in the 2018 rankings. Morgan Burnett brings a veteran presence to a young group, and HES certainly an upgrade over Mike Mitchell, from a tackling standpoint, and a leadership, communication standpoint. I expect things to get much better in that department with Burnett in the fold. Sean Davis continues to float around the defense, yet to establish a position, but HES do for a strong. While HES not the high-impact guy many thought he would be coming out of Maryland, HES shown enough flashes for me to believe he can be a key guy for this defense. Aside from Davis and Burnett, the Steelers went big at safety in the draft, picking Terrell Edmonds in the first round, and Marcus Allen in the fifth round. I still think Allen could slide to middle linebacker and not miss a beat, but I can't see that happening right now. With Edmonds, HES a terrific athlete and is a guy who was a great communicator at Virginia Tech. Jordan Dangerfield, Nat Bearer, and Malik Golden will battle it out for the final roster spots in training camp. I like the depth, versatility, and physicality with this group. It's trending in the right direction. 3. Cleveland Browns I know that Jabril Peppers really struggled early on last playing the single high safety role under Greg Williams, but I like the way he closed the, finishing the year with four tackles, and one interception against the Steelers. When HES allowed to play in the box, HES a great player. With the addition of Damarius Randall to the roster via trade with the Green Bay Packers, Peppers should be allowed to slide down into the box time as Randall takes over the single high role. Randall is making a transition from cornerback to safety, but he has the athleticism and ability to react quickly to what's happening in front of him to get by at the position. Behind Peppers and Randall, Darren Smith, Derek Kindred, and Mike Jordan. Give the Browns some decent depth, with Kindred being the highest ceiling of the three, four. Cincinnati Bengals aside from Georgia Locker, I'm not very high on this group. Iloka is still one of the best safeties in the AFC, but HES pretty much a one-man band at this point, even if Sean Williams is a serviceable starter. The Bengals drafted Brandon Wilson and Trayvon Henderson in the last two years to provide depth next to Clayton Fayadellum, but Cincinnati has an uphill battle ahead at the safety position.